and get started. Um, let the stragglers straggle in. Uh, not a lot of drama on the agenda today, but just sort of updates on things. Uh, ob observant users will have noted that 345 has been sitting in beta for a little while. There are a whole series of problems that came up in QA, and we've been fixing them and uh, expect a new version uh, early next week, I would, I would, uh, I believe. And uh, hopefully that will actually get out of QA and get out to residents and we'll be able to keep moving along. Um, but it's, at this point, none of it is as bad as the last horror show that kept things bottled up for a long time. So nothing very dramatic to be expected. Um, just what's in viewer beta. Uh, and viewer development, well, there's only a couple of small things in there that aren't in the beta yet. Um, and uh, expect the merge of the communications hub UI, Chewy stuff pretty soon. Uh, I, don't, I don't have anything that I can pin that down on, but it's, um, it's, it's pretty, pretty clearly happening um, sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, exactly. And uh, Marov is is uh, here to answer any questions that people might have about that part. Um, so uh, you want to you want to say anything about that, Marov, before we open the floor? Um, no, not really. I, I just I'm here to uh, answer any question you may have, especially for people who want to integrate and uh, merge uh, the um, the repo. Uh, the repo should be available to everybody. So in and lab slash virtually. Uh, I don't know if anyone tried uh, too much. Uh, I would be interested to hear if anyone tried. Uh, that's all. No. Uh, I mean, if someone wants to try to develop that externally, then by all means do, but... Um, well, it is true, and what is something else? Uh, uh, anything is true in some level. Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by something else. What would that be? <laughs> I think the question is uh, of the changes in the Chewy version of the viewer, what changes are Chewy itself and what changes are other things that got sucked in? It's a pretty uh, extensive project, so a, a, a lot of stuff got refactored um, and, and bugs were uncovered and fixed, so... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's all going in, um, and it was all produced by the same project. Okay, maybe I can take that that one as a little bit just to to make things clear. There are a lot of things in in the in the project that may look like not true, meaning that uh, they don't have to do anything with uh, the user interface of of the of the, um, of, uh, of IAM and chat. Uh, but a lot of things have to do with actually a refactoring, as as mentioned, of uh, the. Uh, inventory was what's called actually before the inventory uh, folder view, uh, which is used actually now into, into this uh, UI. Uh, so if you look into the, the the list, a lot of things have to do with Chewy 101. If you look into uh, uh, into the commits, you're going to see a lot of Chewy 101 stuff. That's what the refactoring is all about. The sure the refactoring is marked Chewy 101. So uh, that's a big piece. Everything else is really uh, strictly chewy, um, 
communication hub, chat, chat and IMs. Okay, so um, the other questions on that? Uh, I know you haven't all had very much time to to look at it, but uh, it's out there. So, and and as I said in the email I sent, um, that's going to viewer development before server side baking does. Um, or that's the the plan. Uh, it is, I, I'm not really sure what other things might end up getting slotted in either before or after those. Uh, there, there are various fixes and, and other projects, uh, including the materials branch that are um, in various stages of development and, and, and might end up um, being interleaved between those two big development projects from inside the lab. Be watching. Uh, you know, you'll you'll see those events happen when they happen, and I'm I'm not going to I'm not in a position to to accurately predict dates about when things will merge because I never am. And then, of course, there's server side baking, and I've heard reports from a number of people that. They've made progress and made parts of it work. And Nix is here to give us an update on how things are going on the server side and when the next push will come on the viewer code base. Nix? Hey, guys. Um, so uh, we are progressing further along uh, on the back end. Uh, we have noticed that some people are having some pretty serious inventory issues. Um, on Aditi. Uh, if you are experiencing that, please let me know. Either I am note card email, uh, and we do have a fix where we can fix your account. Um, we're going to be rolling out a fix so that when the next time you import your account from Agni, um, that you just won't see that problem uh, anymore. Um, but that has not rolled out yet, uh, so we can do manual fixes if you need to test. Um, but uh, we have a number of server-side fixes that I believe uh, we were working on rolling out to a DD uh, yesterday. Uh, I'm going to make sure that those are fully rolled out uh, and that everything is up to date. Uh, and we have a number of fixes on the viewer side that I'm currently working on a merge with uh, viewer beta. And once that finishes, uh, hopefully by the end of today, uh, I should be able to push the code to uh, Sunshine External uh, and let you guys see uh, the updates. Um, the one uh, major uh, required piece that you will be getting uh, will be the fix for when you save a wearable item. Uh, without making other changes to the current outfit folder. Uh, we have a mechanism in there to bump the uh, folder version ID number uh, for that. Um, and that is something you're going to definitely want to integrate in uh, your viewers. Uh, otherwise, uh, whenever someone ends up editing a wearable, they won't be able to see the effects until they change something else about what they're wearing. Um, are there any questions? Anyone having any difficulties doing the merge work? Uh, where are you guys at? Tank. My, my understanding is that the Firestorm team has been focused on getting uh, the development work they've been they had been doing 
into releasable form so that then they can focus on server side baking merge. Um, so I don't know, I, I, other than a couple of experimental things, I don't know that they've made a lot of progress. I don't believe they've put an experimental version out. Um, Singularity reports a, 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 a current version. Um, Latif, I think you've done work on it in uh, the uh, in your library. Is that correct? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, uh, I have it in in uh, in uh, libopen meta there's and Radigast nightly builds also supports server side baking. Uh, have uh, let's see, have we got? Uh, I see Gaines here has has a merge started in Exodus. We'll be starting it shortly. Uh, I think you know, in terms of the ordering, you know, in in principle, you can do the ordering any way you want, and since you have such large you know, since you have real merges to do for for either of these, uh, it it may not matter. Um, I don't know. Uh, so, but uh, in in principle, at least, it doesn't. Um, that would be tragic. Nix, you said that this is a new cap capability that will uh, force increase serial number of the current outfit holder. That's already on the on the test regions on Aditi. Uh, yes, we're actually uh, investigating a solution that doesn't require the new capability um, because we found that there are certain cases where when you make outfit changes on old style regions and then return. Um, to the uh, server bake regions um, that that was a problem case. Uh, so at the moment we're testing a solution that doesn't require the new capability and just uses the existing um, link uh, modifications in order to um, increase the version number. Uh, and that appears to be working reasonably well. Um, but any assistance uh, testing that would definitely be appreciated. Uh, as I said, the uh, source code for that should be out later today, if at all possible. You, uh, I assume most of you know that you can follow a uh, a repository and actually on Bitbucket and have it email you when things are committed there. So. Uh, but for very many of them, but it, it is possible. So with um, with things coming in in apparently Chewy first, and and then server side baking, uh, I don't think that. It's likely that we're going to be rolling out uh, the server side baking to the production grid right on the eight week window that we we promised you. So it, it's not a giant emergency, but um, you know, do stay on top of it. And of course, anything we can do to help Firestorm when they when they get to it is something we're, we'll be happy to do, um, and uh, or anybody else for that matter. But uh, Firestorm hasn't really gotten started. That's well. We hope that we'll beat June by a significant margin. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, but uh, but we'll 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 get uh, we'll get some fun stuff going here. Um, So any uh, any other questions, issues? I mean, that's that's the agenda I had. So the floor is open for uh, either more of that. 
just issues specific to merging or issues with uh, Firestorm in general? Well, just whatever, you know, whatever people want to bring up, that's fine. Notice, I'm not too sure if this is uh, occurring on vanilla as well, but uh, double-click teleports for some reason seems to have changed. So when you double-click teleport, there seems to be a second or so delay in rendering before you actually end up at your uh, destination. I don't know if anybody else has re yes, uh, recognized I could, it. Yeah, I've, I've, had that. I've seen that here, too. I thought it was me, so it's something that you've seen The thing is, is, I'm not too sure if, if it started with the last official merge from vanilla or if it was something that was specific to uh, Firestorm itself. Just figured I'd mention it either way. Um, just a note about the merging of server-side baking and Firestorm. I've got it done pretty much. It's just I'm waiting on Kitty to get RLVA working for many in. Actually, none of it is tragic. No matter how it comes out, it's not tragic. Tragic is a three-year-old being hit by a car, okay? We're not, we're not at that level. Uh-huh. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a short meeting today. Is that is that how this is working out? Well, I throw. Wouldn't bother me. I'd go back and put my head down over the coat again. Well, can I throw something in that's like way out in left field? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, I'd, let me before you do that. Let me just mention uh, we are making progress on the materials stuff. You will. Uh, at present, you you will see. Uh, the present belief is that some of the server side support will roll out to one of the RCs, which of course won't be of any use to anybody until we have the viewer side stuff. But all of that should be appearing shortly, which is why we want to let Tanya and Gaines get out of this meeting real soon. So uh, make that happen. So um, yeah. we'll have. We'll have stuff to play with there, and that'll be fun Fun changes to import when they're ready to merge. What do we do if somebody's copied our items? Does Linden Labs uh, investigate DMCA still? Yeah, but that's totally not in scope for this meeting, and or, or have nothing to do with me. I mean, yeah, there's a DMCA process. It hasn't changed as far as I know, and I don't know anything about how it works or who does it. Uh, who's who's handling the build tool, for instance? I mean, that's where my left field question is. Uh, I took a look at it, and what a cluster, and you can fill in the blank. Uh, I was looking at relaying it as a horizontal layout, but I was told that uh, folks are working on a new tool. Uh, build so floater? Yeah, the floater, yes. Floater. Um, there are some changes to the build floater coming as part of the materials project. Um, it's not a major rework, it's, but it does clean up um, the sections of the build floater that deal with texturing because we needed to add a lot more capability in without. Uh, I, I don't remember how it came out. Tony, did we end up needing to add the few extra pixels uh, but or not? Uh, They're there now. Uh, I may uh, rip them out before it's all said and done. Yeah, so you'll see uh, uh, Tony's working on on that. Um, so there there are some additional uh, so there's some changes uh, in the texturing tab uh, that that clean it up significantly. I think it's it's a much nicer and more understandable layout, um, and of course has a bunch of new capabilities. Um, 
Yeah, I'm just, I've just been, with our group, I've been just a total PETA with everybody because I'm a content creator and I see a lot of things and I hear a lot of things too, being with the hobo group too. And uh, I know I've been kind of driving everybody up a wall with that thing, but it's just mainly was coming out with the materials thing. That's what was holding it up. Because I, I looked at that and my thought was, was taking it apart and setting up each section as a separate module instead of having everything laid on top of each other. So it'll call it. It'll call it in, but it won't um, be all sitting on top of each other. Uh, if the, the the that's, I'm I'm more than happy to have that conversation. That's not really in scope here. If you want to stop by my regular um, open dev meetings on either Mondays or, what are they, Mondays and Wednesdays now. Um, basically, the process, if you want to do something like that for a contribution to our viewer, is to, uh, would be to, uh, you know, do a set of storyboards and mock-ups to show how you suggest it should be laid out and why. And, uh, you know, I'm more than happy to have that reviewed. And it's, it, it, I don't think anybody would agree that the build floater is, is, uh, a, a, either a thing of beauty or, or as functional as it could be. So, uh, you know, on the other hand, uh, you will get the blame from all the people who claim that you've destroyed their muscle memory. So. <laughs> well, they're already hating me now because of me bringing it up so many times. Yeah, the the Wiley's comment is is really really pertinent. The uh, the the beginning of the process should be to describe the problem you're trying to solve in as much detail and clarity as possible without describing the solution you propose. Right. So separate the description of the problem from the description of any given solution because it. it uh, the the first thing to agree on is that we need to make a change, um, and and that's often the the most difficult part. And we need to consider what are the trade offs in making a change. And one of those trade offs, I wasn't I wasn't completely being flipped, but one of those trade offs is that um, as anybody who's got even as little history as I have with Second Life will know very well by now. Um, if you change anything, people howl about it. Um, if you then change it back to the way it was before, people will howl about it again. Um, so um, just changing things is, you know, at least in some quarters, uh, a, a really bad thing. And so making a change is something that we that we do only because we think there's a, a, a strong reason to do it. Um, right. <laughs> and, and if you do nothing, people will howl. Um, so... Uh, yeah. So, uh, but, but the, so the, the, the process that we've tried to put in place is, you know, is to say, we, we really want to agree on what the problem is and what we're trying to solve about that problem and what the trade offs are and go through that. And then, uh, from that derive a solution. So you may have a solution in mind. I hope you do when you, when you describe the problem, but, uh, yeah, well, it makes sense about the storyboard uh, make, or a flow chart. I mean, it makes a lot of sense the way to uh, handle it. We've been through a few of those, and it, it's, uh, you know, it is a process, and we, we, I know how to turn the crank and make it work. Um, but that's really not what we're here for. Um, HTTP 1.1 server side. Monty, you want to bring people up to date? Is Monty here? Let's yeah. Just yeah, I'm here. I'm typing away in chat. Um, let's see, where are we? The um, bits are starting to be QA'd now. First one passed um, overnight. Those big ones are coming up. Um, most of the gotchas identified. Um, most interesting one being HTTP and LL uh, request URL and LSL script land being something that is com almost completely beyond our control. Um, the uh, don't have a schedule yet. We have um, interesting deploy problems to deal with, including getting out the private regions, or not the private regions, but the special channels and hosts that will have um, handmade customized configs to test uh, 
so, so people can do more thorough testing, uh, do air recovery, and so on. So everything is looking good. I don't have even approximate dates. Um, it has positive effects, I'll say that. Uh, in the least in testing, I like what it has been doing so far. Not order of magnitude profound, but uh, it's um, a better experience. That's it. What the HTTP 1.1 features are you using? Is it keep alive only? Initially, yep. Yeah, just trying to get some keep alive going. Been I've been bugging him about pipelined requests, but we'll we'll see. HTTP 1.1 pipelining doesn't really work, and there is very little support in libraries out there for it. So, which is why Google invented Speedy, and people invented Thrift and other libraries on top of it. So, standard HTTP 1.1 pipelining is probably not the way to go. Well, the curl lines are, it's def, pipeline is definitely new to libcurl, uh, which we're still based on. And, um, it's going to take a little bit of more time anyway. So that's a yes. future still. Have you looked at the Google's or the Facebook's solution to this? Originally, I was, um, somewhat skeptical of Speedy. I'm actually more interested now, but, um, for other reasons, but even with Speedy, um, mapping the connection management that we should be doing and are not doing onto Speedy still looks like a problem, even given their multiplexing uh, logic. So I'm going to look at it again. I'd maybe like to do a, a prototype or have someone do a prototype, um, but yeah, nothing on a, on a map right now. He does advertise solving the problem with the, uh, you know, home routers that cannot uh, handle more than a handful HTTP connections. Yeah, it moves the multiplexing down, well, up a layer. It's in application space, effectively. So that's nice, but I don't know how, if that model is right for us, uh, as opposed to a browser, where it is a, a more reasonable solution. But we'll see. Don't be shy. Don't feel free to prototype something. But when when you do have regions publicly access, accessible regions that are running the new server code, um, you can get word out to this group through me, Monty. You probably do that. Will do. There will be warning. I was wondering if uh, Nix can provide a little bit more technical detail what he meant by another solution to this uh, problem and changing variables without a new capability. How 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 is it done? Ah, so more hacks. Okay, well, uh, going once. I'm going to add something. Have you yeah. heard anything more about the uh, upgrading to FMOD EX? Yes, yes, I have. Um, we have somebody who has done a bunch of work internally based on a contribution from Sovereign Engineer or at least in some way leveraging it. I'm, I, I haven't reviewed it yet myself, so I, 
I don't know what the details. Um, uh, but um, that's uh, in progress. So um, I'm not sure when it will merge to viewer development, but it's it's definitely in the pipeline and being actively worked on. Uh, it It's not at all clear that uh, we're going to have as easy a process as we had before for you to duplicate what we did. Um, so we're going to have to look at that. Uh, if, if on on the previous version of FMOD, there was a single FTP tarball that they that they distributed, and we provided a script that would download that and and repeat the build that we did, since we couldn't distribute binaries. Um, but the uh, the um, we're 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 pulling the um, right now they distribute it very differently they distribute it differently for different platforms so I'm not sure what we're going to end up with for uh, a process by which you can duplicate what we've been doing um, I'll have to work with you on that it it may end up being as as bad as uh, you know, we document what we did in, you know, prose, and and you have to you have to sort of uh, duplicate the process. I, I hope we can do better than that, but I, um, it won't be any worse than that. Is KDU on the uh, the books at all, or is that not being considered for future? Um, you, you mean the the upgraded version of KDU? I mean, we are using KDU now. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. I don't know. There, there's no timetable for it yet, but we do have somebody looking at it. All right. <laughs> I have just something quick too. Sorry, what's going on here? Oh, they're trying to sound out spam noises. Fatty kid oh. turn sounds off. What? Oh, sorry. Um, I I thought you guys were talking to me. I'm like, wait a minute. I was just asking a question. Um, <laughs> okay. So so anyway, sorry. The the uh, the contacts uh, floater. Um, I just noticed this earlier, and I know that it was part of you know an intended design, but. Um, I noticed that, that there's, there's all, seems to be all kinds of issues when you're uh, revoking and or giving uh, specifically map permissions to, to your friends. I don't know if anybody else has noticed. Uh, it seems to be incredibly unreliable uh, right now. Um, and I'm not oh. really too sure if that's just specific to uh, Firestorm or not, but it seems pretty bad. My understanding was that it was clamped um, originally because... Uh, uh, if you just sat there repetitively clicking on and off permissions for, for map that, uh, it, it could, you know, make the SIM unreliable or maybe even crash the SIM. My understanding is that's why it was done. We don't even have that in, in our, uh, version of that floater now. Talking about in the conversations floater, clicking on contacts and then friends. Uh, no, I'm sorry. In the context floater, um, you know, yeah, where you actually uh, designate uh, rights to to your friends for uh, you know being able to to map you or uh, you know um, right. uh, giving them modify rights or, or whatnot. Um, Um, that used to work more reliably than the web search or the web profile. I don't know if 
when the labs has changed anything on the back end of that or not. Yeah, it's interesting. In Firestorm, in the, in the current latest uh, build, um, uh, I was flipping it off, and I noticed as soon as you flip off the map, it, it was graying out for the user. And I guess it's only supposed to grow out for a couple of seconds before you can then make another modification right. to that user's mod rights. Well, it, it was kind of sticking, like, indefinitely. I had to re-log and log back in until I could actually flip it again. But when I did end up flipping it, it was interesting. I got the dialogue four times. It kept repetitively asking me if I wanted to uh, to give uh, permissions. That sounds like a server issue. The gray out happens until it receives a, um, a sort of a confirmation update from the... Um, server saying that the permission has been set before you can set again so it prevents you from uh, trying to make another change before the previous change happens <laughs> sounds a lot like it hadn't gotten the um, update back from the server saying that it's uh, actually been changed but yeah it, it, it's interesting I, I tested it in a few different sims as well just to make sure that it wasn't the sim that I you know that I was in and uh I noticed that it was happening in, in you know, various sims. So, uh, yeah, yeah, again, just one of those things I figured I'd mention. Again. Sounds a lot like maybe the back end might, have be, might be having issues again, or it may have just been an issue at that time if it's not happening now. Especially if it happens so repetitively. It kind of rolls out being a break network off. issue. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is. What I'm wondering is, is it going to stay that way? I mean, you know, because it, if you take off map rights from somebody and then it disables your ability to then, right after that, you know, disable their their, uh, you know, let's say modify rights for objects or whatever, it it just seems really inconvenient. I mean, in addition to the fact that it's yeah, you know, kind of unreliable, it it was sort of a limitation from the original UI logic. Um, and sort of a limitation of the controls itself, it really should only disable the um, that one setting during that time before it gets the update. Actually, wait, I'm not sure, because I think all the uh, permission settings have to be sent in the same packet, and sending another update after changing one without it being um, confirmed as being changed or actually having taken effect yet could cause some issues if you send another one saying, Another one with, uh, um, yet again, with different settings. Because um, I think the one on the, I think the setting in the viewer doesn't change itself until it gets the new uh, data back. Um, so there would have to be some significant changes there to handle that. That would be tragic. Gotcha. Well, either way, I just thought you know, I would make mention to it. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it might be a server problem because it shouldn't take that. It shouldn't. Well, it should only take a couple seconds. It shouldn't not at all ever come back, which sounds like a problem. So it is clamped server side, though, right? I mean, the the, the duration of or the interval of time between you being able to, uh, you know, to change uh, permissions uh, for for not, different friends. Well, I don't know. About this that. sounds like a Firestone bug. I have just tested it in Singularity. Works fine. Uh, yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't know if it's been changed or not. I haven't been following act. I haven't been. It works act like act a charm. Not for a little while, because that that whole code in um, Firestorm is mine, but it's it's from quite a while ago. And yeah, it just tested it uh, in Sarto. Yeah, so maybe it was just a temporary issue that day, or um, somebody's uh, may have accidentally broken something in the gotcha. code sense. But it's definitely a. Uh, seems like it probably either was specific to that day or you or um or is something with the viewer well i uh, i'm not aware of any related server changes if in the course of investigating it you find that something has changed on the server side that you think is a problem let me know and we can we can if open a something, case on it something significant we would have been hearing about it already pretty severely <laughs> <laughs> was, oh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Spread. So the, uh, this raises a related question, though, because I've been sitting here trying to figure out who it is that Kata has been talking to, and they show up in nearby voice, but they don't show up in the people panel, and they don't show up anywhere else. So how are they here?
they may have crashed. And their voices uh, remaining. Either that or using one of the many, many uh, Vivox exploits. <laughs> Which I doubt. It's probably just crashed. Okay, can you? Are you guys not able to see me? I, I mean, I'm in the region. No, we can't see you. I'm guessing you may have uh, gotten disconnected from the region, but your voices remain connected. Oh, sorry about that's... that, guys. <laughs> that's, that's, that happens. I was I was talking. <laughs> Didn't mean to raise any suspicion there. My apologies. I just wanted to say that I find the lack of communication between the region and Vivox to be a little bit uh, disconcerting, especially when it comes to the ability for certain avatars to listen to more than they really ought to be able to. I second this. Vivox is kind of a joke, so... Yeah. <laughs> I've had instances of eavesdropping. Like really bad. Uh, you should keep your voice floater open when you're discussing private stuff on voice. Those people did not show up in active speakers because they weren't speaking. They were able to listen to more than they were able to speak. They were using something. Yeah, some people uh, have had a great fun listening into Linden private meetings on their estates and posting those on YouTube. But Vivox is, you know, a fish cheese of security, so. What security? Yeah, exactly. Pause. <laughs> I have a question regarding the the the, the changes uh, that uh, Jonathan has made uh, with uh, with this uh, request uh, teleport capability. Do you do you have any estimate uh, what when will that server change uh, be rolled on the on the on the grid? No, uh, I'm. Uh, I did the server side changes for that, um, and there's one anomalous thing going on in the logs that I'm still trying to debug to make sure that I didn't break something. Uh, but it has not yet been um, reviewed, and we're just now, uh, I just got back a response literally during this meeting uh, on UI feedback, so we'll need to do a round of changes there. The, the, um, the message change is actually trivial. It's basically a, a, a special type of IM message. Um, yeah, but I'm just wondering that much it will be code. rolled out in the server, this, this trivial change, because I don't really right. need the, 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 the viewer changes to go in. I'm just wondering when it will be available on the grid. What is this? Uh, what you, what you, the, the issue number you want to watch for is Storm 1917 uh, and uh, I'll be glad to let you know when it's rolling out, but uh, I have no idea when that'll be yet. It's a slight change in protocol that allows you to request somebody to teleport you. I mean the Exodus feature? Uh, it's sort of, it was inspired by the Exodus feature. It's oh, not okay. implemented the same way. Um, yeah, so if, if you look at Storm 1838, uh, it um, it's what Jonathan implemented on the uh, on the viewer side, and and that's there are probably going to be some small changes to the way the UI works. I, I, like I said, I just got the feedback back on that, and have to have to do it, and then we'll have to decide when to move it in. Um, the viewer changes backwards compatible in that. Uh, if you attempt to use the feature on a version on a region that doesn't support that message, then your request doesn't get delivered, and you don't get any feedback about the fact that it didn't get delivered. But um, and uh, um, so it just drops into a black hole. But if uh, if the server side supports it, then you request that somebody teleport you. They get a little dialogue that says, you know, so and so would like to teleport you with a message that you included. Uh, and then they have the option of hitting teleport, and then y you, the requester, get a get a standard teleport offer dialog that you can use to teleport yourself. So it's just an extra uh, an, an extra message to start a handshake that makes it a little quicker and easier to do that. So, um, and I, I 
I think it reasonable to suppose that that server change will get into an RC at some point, but um, I haven't even requested it that be put in yet because, like I said, there's there's one thing appearing in the logs when I when I do it that I can't explain, and so I'm trying to debug that. Uh, make sure I'm not doing it. Today it worked pretty well, actually, on the two yeah, test regions. It, right, right. It, it works. There are two test regions running the code, um, Blizzard and Flurry on on Aditi that have the code, and it, and it works just fine. But the log files on those regions have some messages in them I don't like the look of, so I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. So it's it's right. The original request was was slightly different than what we ended up doing. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, no comment. A week after health freeze is over. <laughs> I think it's a really finely constructed system that works perfectly. <laughs> it doesn't have to, and when it does have to, it doesn't. What, Second Life? No way. Um, more specifically, the group chat. Uh-oh, oh boy. Storm, sorry, what's Storm 17? Oh, the Deformer. Yeah, uh, no, I don't have any update on that. Sorry. I can remember that the group chat issue was something that was just introduced after a series of updates. And before that, it wouldn't really be as bad as what it is now. I wonder what happened. Like, I think we can all agree that some groups, like the condition of their group chat is just completely, yeah, it's, it's dire. Some groups are on worse nodes than others. If you're on a, even if you're a small there, group and you're on a bad node, you're going to have a bad group chat. Right. And what if you have like a group of approximately a thousand members? Can you request to have it changed to another node? Don't believe there's a mechanism to do that. Yeah, I don't think there is. At least that's what I've been hearing over the. <laughs> Many many years so, that this has been worked on and so off. Essentially, on. it's it's a hundred linden Russian roulette, and then you can hope you end up on a good one. Well, I think it changes over time, somehow. Huh. Yeah, there's probably some sort of load balancing on it. Yeah, I, I just I don't think there's anybody still there that has any deep knowledge into the system, or if they do, they probably haven't touched it and many years yeah they're hiding they don't want to they don't want to be found i wouldn't want to be found i think oscar was the one that worked on it last yeah he fixed it briefly and then they pushed the actual fix and it broke it worse oh well, uh it's all that's that's all uh water over the dam um it's uh as far as i know it is what it is and we're we're not we don't have any big projects working on on making major back end changes at this point. So, um, hey, it's, hey which is not to say that it might not come up again, but it it isn't on the current priority list. Someone go dust off that XMPP uh, branch, and <laughs> it couldn't be worse. Hey guys, <laughs> uh, I, I had a I had probably just one more question left. If if uh, you guys have time. Hmm. Um, I was curious uh, about the uh, the uh, ability to save um, permissions on a on a prim. You know, people are using them to uh, you know uh, bend people's avatars with uh, you know funky animations and stuff like that. And once they take a copy of said prim to their inventory, they retain the permissions. So as long as they keep it in their inventory and don't res don't reset the scripts that are that are contained inside of the object, they're able indefinitely to play permissions on a on an avatar. Yeah, that's been a long, long-standing issue. I don't think anybody's um, considered looking at that again for. Uh... Oh, when I was, was just. Last time I... I think it's been like three years since I've had anybody even 
seriously talk about that one. Well, my, my question, I mean, my whole question on this thing, and be, because it's been outstanding and it's been around for so long, I, I guess what I was wondering is, uh, you know, are there are there any, I mean, is this viewed as being any s- sort of a problem to, uh, you know, to Linden Labs, or is it, it something that, you know, be. was just kind of forgotten about? Or No, it, it really should be viewed as a problem, because whenever my roommate logs in on his Second Life account, his avatar is forced into a blowjob animation, and whenever he logs in, <laughs> That's he has horrible. to reset. Do you know who the offender is? Uh, That's the thing. You never know. know Who has his permissions because he logs in on a busy sim. I mean, what they do, what the people do is they'll take the prim that they have the safe permissions on, attach it to their HUD, and then drop in the animations that they want. And they can basically just indefinitely make those avatars go into any sort of funky, inappropriate animation, uh, you know, loop that they want to. Right. And uh, you know it's it's really bad. So if you I can was just find out who the offender is, you submit a you might be able to submit an abuse report. Yeah, yeah, you know, in in the past when abuse reports have been submitted on that type of thing, I I honestly don't think that a, a G team's been interested in you know banning the people that are doing it because I, I guess their view on it was if they're if they're willingly sitting on the objects and giving the permissions through you know some sort of silly means, then it's uh it, you know it, it's their fault. So uh, really, you know. so if a big invisib prim that has click to sit is just yeah right in your well, face, that's why you block in a click the weapons slit. testing sandbox. Okay. Yeah, then you or wants you to teleport to what is it, Gay See, Island this is, or something. This is why there's See, this, this is slit click in the viewer. This is part of the other problem with with this two guys is that when you have a prim, if you make it invisible, you know, I mean, somebody mentioned the mega prim, but if you have a prim and you make it invisible, what you do is you instant unsit the person. And no dialogue comes up that ever asks for permissions. That's really the bug inherently in itself is that there's never any sort of dialogue that will ask for the person's permissions. It just takes their permissions, and and that's it. And then all you do is you just you, using the script, you send the uh, you know the cube to four hundred nine six meters, so it returns to your inventory. You you wear it on your HUD. They don't know you're wearing it because you're not resing it to world. You drop some animations in it, and bam, there you go. You know, I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous. Well, well fortunately, well, okay. Um, but let me let me slow us down here because we're kind of off track. Um, it's not really a yeah. third party viewer issue. Um, and if, it has been discussed to death on many occasions. Yeah, uh, if if you'd like to send me an email about it, please do us at lindenlab.com, and uh, I can see whether or not there's something to track about it, but we don't need to keep, keep going on it here. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll get, I'll make sure that it gets raised. Yeah, just, just be careful with the proposed solutions. I've seen people propose solutions that will break, you know, half of the content of Second Life, so. Right, we're very sensitive to that sort of problem, yes. But Which is it's why a, it hasn't it's been fixed so far, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult thing to solve when all the possible solutions are worse than the original problem. So there. And the other it, the problems were uh, highly uh, technically difficult or impossible. But you know that doesn't mean we can't discuss it. Uh, we we certainly can. So. Well, um, if you but it's not really it's not really in scope for. Yeah. Right. It, it's not really in scope for this meeting though. Um. Okay, uh, any other third-party viewer development issues? Going once? Going twice? Thank you, World. As usual, helpful. All right. I think we are adjourned. I'll try to get the recording up shortly. Thanks, folks. I missed the first Thank part. Did, where's some um, server baking at? No timeline? No specific timeline yet. No from 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 Linden Lab. On. I have an unofficial timeline. It's going to be rolled out on the full uh, second life in June. Well, is there any test regions There's, that work uh, yet? There's some tests on uh, the beta grid. But do they work? Yes. It works. It works pretty okay. okay. okay it, they the are last called thing I heard was they had unrelated issues that uh, kind of prevented you from even having an appearance, let alone uh, testing that part. Well, you, it just takes you to log into Oddity and go to Sunshine Test One, and you can check it out for yourself. Okay, because I might have to at some point. So on the um, the well, 
on the sit perming stuff. Um, that's why there is uh, in third party viewers uh, yeah. block sit click. There's also um, something since Emerald, which I've kept working myself, is the um, revoke uh, revoke uh, perms on stand and whatnot. Um, and that was actually one I had fixed because at one point um, some change uh, had happened server side, and I was working on it at the time, and I noticed that um, perm revoking wasn't working at all. And I actually got Oscar, I think it was Oscar then, um, to actually fix that, even though it's literally the message being used is nothing that's ever been used by any viewer before. Whoa, my head. Whoa. Uh oh. The house just got rezzed on our heads. Um, so yeah, that at least Ow. we have the ability to uh, remove permissions uh, if you add the feature yourself. You just need to know, I think, the UUD, well, UUID of the object itself, which is impossible to get on the HUD. Yeah, but well, here, that, that's, if you that's sat the... on it, you know what it is. Yeah, well, that, that's a problem, but there's also another problem that, that I'd like to mention, and, and that's that the, the packet that gets sent to revoke the perms, the problem is is that if the object is intelligent, or rather the LSL script is intelligent, what happens is um, it will request the permissions multiple times, which, which effectively renders all of that protection useless entirely. Mm. So, um, you know, so, so that, that's a real problem. I mean, for the average, you know, uh, publicly made oh, you know, no. scripts, yeah. it works okay. But, um, you know, I, I actually tried working. I, originally, when I put that code into Emerald, I tried working on it. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, I tested it thoroughly before it went into Emerald as a patch. And I knew that it had that vulnerability, but there was really no way around it. I mean, you can't just sit there and, and spam, you know, uh, you know, deny permission requests. It's just, you know, not, not a good thing to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it, it still was the matter that that um, actual packet got uh, broken at one point. At least it works right. again. Or at least it worked again a couple of years ago when I had it fixed. So, so, so you you ended up actually uh, maintaining that code when it went uh, into Phoenix. Yeah, just just during that one little period, because gotcha. I, I noticed that it wasn't working anymore. I'm like, oh, hmm, I wonder why it's not working. And I did some testing and found that the uh, message just wasn't effective anymore. And uh, I think I traced it down to uh, some server update they did because I think I found it just at the time in which it was broken. So there was actually some regions I was able to go to that weren't updated yet that it was working on. So I was able to tell that, Oh yeah, it was just one channel. It was just one set of changes. And, um, I think Oscar went and, uh, fixed it. I think it was like, um, a bit of weird Boolean logic that like someone had accidentally deleted that wasn't doing anything. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. Or at least apparently wasn't doing anything. It was some, it was some, I think it was like some really garbage code. I don't really remember whole locks. This was like too, two and a half years ago. Yeah, it's been in the viewer for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, crazy shit. Yeah. Oh. A lot of people here today. What the hell? Is there something special? <laughs> yeah, can we tell it? I tried teleporting out and it doesn't seem to work. This region tends to break. Actually, yeah. what was it? The last one we couldn't even have here because the region crashed almost instantly. Lol. Uh, 